Episode 9 Rogue Saturday, July 18th, 2037 Two days before Jaden woke up, face down in the pile of papers they had fallen asleep reading. They looked down at them, rubbing their eyes, reflecting on all they had taken in last night. Reading about Zero's transition from artist to activist, Jaden realized they were no longer simply trying to avenge the death of Carlos. Something had changed. They understood exactly what Zero was trying to do and how he came to be who he was. Everything he had talked about was beginning to make sense. Jaden pulled on a freshly printed D-tag hoodie and Dreamscape camo and picked up their bone suit. The armor plates were so damaged from yesterday that they were almost useless. They threw them on anyway and plotted out into the living area, beat up, but patched up. Jaden squinted in the morning light and almost jumped out of their skin when they saw a marshal sitting in the chair facing them. Jaden snapped into a combat stance, knees bent, fists raised, and suddenly awake. Relax, champ, it's offline, said a voice behind them. Jaden turned to see Jason and their friends in the kitchen area gathered around the counter eating breakfast. Little souvenir from yesterday. Jason continued, mouth full of cereal. Jaden looked again. The marshal was slumped like it had been drugged. Wires and cables were attached to it via ports in its back. You could have told me, Jaden said, breathing a sigh of relief. I just did, bristled Jason. Jaden noticed Jason was wearing an invisible hand t-shirt. What's it doing here? Jaden asked. Someone on the network developed a patch. Jason answered. It hacks a marshal's operating system, lets you control one remotely. He walked over to the 3D1, which hummed and buzzed as it spat out a black graphite patch, which fell onto a pile of identical objects below it. It was palm-sized, the same shape as a guitar pick. Jason picked up a patch and handed it to Riz. Show him, he said. Riz looked at Jaden as she passed, blushing a little. She walked over and bent the robot forward, pulling out the wires and slapping the patch into the back of the robot. Apply to the comms port, like so. Give it a few seconds, and... The marshal jolted, like it was having a seizure. Everyone backed away. Its blue eyes turned yellow. Riz opened a display and began moving controls in the air. The marshal stood up, moving in response to Riz's commands, obeying her. The other broadsiders cheered at the puppet show. It's so sick, grinned Jason. Let's get these out to the network, pronto. Wait, Jaden said, studying the robot. Why the comms port? Where else would you put it? Jason asked, irritated. Jaden walked around the back of the robot, examining it. If this thing works like any of the printers I fix, the main comms port is where all the security hardware is concentrated. That's the easiest place to disable any hacks from. Why not put it, say, straight in the head? You've got the same OS access, but none of the hardware blockers from the main comms port. What? No, it's fine. Jason balked. A lot of smart people worked on this, Jaden. People smarter than you. We've been up most of the night fine-tuning this. He motioned to the others in the room. Yeah, but... Jaden started to respond, but was cut off by Jason. I didn't ask your opinion on the design of the patch. Your job is to get out there and use it in the field. Jaden frowned at Jason. My job? Who put you in charge? Jason looked taken aback, like this was a stupid question. Zero put me in charge. Jaden was dumbfounded. I've contacted the other attack groups. Jason said matter-of-factly. Let him know I'll be overseeing everything from now on. The others looked at Jaden with shrugs. Jason smiled. Jaden looked at Riz. She avoided eye contact. Jaden couldn't believe this. What? Jaden said. No. Zero didn't put you in charge, bro. This isn't supposed to be a... a spider. He... What are you talking about? Jason interrupted. There's not supposed to be a center. Jaden continued. It's like... This isn't up for discussion. Jason snapped, cutting Jaden off again. You need to fall in line. Jaden's cheeks grew hot. Oh, like we fell in line yesterday? Jaden asked. When you ordered us into a corner? Yeah. Great job, Jason. Jason stepped to Jaden, his face reddening. The station was the only way out. He snapped, eyes blazing. Jaden stared back, baring their teeth, not backing down. What is it? You want to run the show, Warhead? 
He asked, air quoting the name. That it? Why? You don't care about the cause. He sneered. You're only here because Carlos got killed and... Jaden's eyes flashed as they spiked an uppercut into Jason's jaw, knocking him back. The bowl of cereal he was holding fell to the floor and smashed. Say his name again. Jaden screamed. Say it again. Jason stumbled, clutching his chin, milk soaking into his shirt. Before he could retaliate, Riz jumped between them, holding Jaden back. Don't touch me. Jaden snapped. Riz looked shocked. Jaden couldn't believe they had snapped at her or that it had come to this. Riz backed off, nodding, understanding Jaden was angry, but stayed in front of Jason. Jason looked over Riz's shoulder at Jaden as he nursed his jaw. Get out! He spat at Jaden. Go die in the street then. You don't want to be on this team. Jason! Riz turned to him, shaking her head. Jason ignored her, pacing behind her, seething. Nah, I'm done. Same as it was with Broadside. You think you can do it all yourself, Jaden, but you're not a leader. That's the part you don't get. Jaden looked at Jason, and then the others huddled behind him like sheep. Jaden snorted, looking at Jason, then at Riz. Jaden grabbed their helmet and walked towards the door. Their eyes lingered on Riz, wishing she'd grab her stuff and come with them. For a second, Riz looked like she was considering it, but she looked back at Jason and the rest of the broadsiders and stayed put. Jaden, don't do this. Riz pleaded. Jaden's heart sunk. They felt completely alone. The old feeling that they couldn't rely on anyone rose from somewhere inside. Like it was a truth chiseled on a stone tablet. Jaden's eyes became glassy, swimming in anger and disappointment. But they weren't about to let Jason see them cry. Zero didn't believe in leaders. Jaden said. That's the part you don't get, Jason. Jaden turned and opened the front door, slamming it shut before Riz could get to it. <laughs> Jaden crept across the rooftops of Kaepernick Avenue, trying to get as close as they could to home without being seen. They stopped at the edge of their block in the Richmond district. There was no way to get any nearer. The apartment building was surrounded by glowing do not cross lines. Marshall stood guard, whilst sharp shots kept watch from the rooftops opposite. A huge pile of flowers and candles spilled out of the building into the street. A few onlookers and a news crew loitered by the entrance. Jaden looked down at them from a gloomy corner, by the fire escape door of the building, out of the sharp shot sights, hood up and helmet on. The tattered remains of their armor hung from their shoulders. In that moment, on a rooftop one block away from the building they had grown up in, Jaden knew they would never be able to call this place home again. For the first time since Carlos died, something gave out inside. A last line of defense Jaden had been keeping up against himself. Jaden felt lightheaded as this guard crumbled. A tear rolled from their cheek, and a new deeper chasm of grief and anger opened in their chest. Jaden took off the helmet, shaking, sliding down the wall, punching the tarmac roof as they sat. More tears came. Jaden was unable to control this sadness, or convert it into anger, or bluster. They felt powerless, unable to stuff these feelings down anymore. Jaden's breathing stuttered as jagged tears fell. The sadness flowed like a river. For Carlos. For Dad. For Zero. For everyone who'd been hurt because of them. Here Jaden was again. Alone, unable to rely on anyone else. All those Jaden had put their faith in had either deserted them or died. They had been marginalized, dismissed, and abandoned. By their parents. By their team. Even by Riz. The tears poured until Jaden could no longer move. Jaden lay on the roof for a long time, trying to feel everything they were feeling. Trying to let all the sadness course through them in the hope it might run out. The sun began to dip. Jaden's head was a cloud of sorrow and rage. The sun sank deeper. Jaden felt their breathing slow up as a tiny sliver of clarity began to emerge. Jason's words had hurt. But he and Carlos were right about Jaden's inability to be a team player. Jaden believed in Zero's ideas about collaboration and decentralization. But Jaden didn't know how to live them. 
It began to dawn on Jaden they were completely centralized when it came to their own life. Jaden wanted to see this through, but felt paralyzed. They knew how Zero wanted them to lead by relying on others and letting go. But Jaden's default response to everything was to self-reliance and centralized control. But that wasn't working anymore. It had never worked, if Jaden was honest. To finish this, Jaden had to find a way to let go. They had to trust someone else. Finally, the tears began to slow. Jaden sat up and looked out at the city. A couple of streets away, an ad for the Broadside World Cup flickered in the sky. It said, cancelled, across it in big letters. Jaden remembered something. Their expression changed. There was one person still alive who maybe they could trust. Jaden put their helmet on and stood, creeping through the evening shadows drawing long across the rooftops. Jane perched on the foot of their bed in workout clothes. She glared at the evening news as she yanked her hair into a ponytail. She felt better after a long soak in the tub, and the journalists who had been calling all morning had stopped at least. But Jane had no idea what her next move was. This was a feeling she wasn't used to. The news was covering the unending riots in South San Francisco. Prota disabled power in some sections of the city, while the president has threatened to declare martial law in an effort to quell the unrest if Prota cannot. The anchor's voice explained. None of which stopped these protesters from printing a, uh, what I'm being told they are calling a rave tank. On screen, a lumpy tank plowed into a legion of marshals. A massive LRAD sound system rose from the back of the vehicle. It was painted in rave camo, like so many broadside bone suits. Its gun turret fired EMP blasts into the swarm of robots in front of it, whilst towards the back, a DJ in a white belly and ski goggles pumped 3D bass from the tank's huge wall of speakers. Outside on the roof opposite, Jaden crouched, helmet up, watching Jane through the windows. Jaden jumped, landing on her roof with a soft thud. Jaden waited a beat. They could hear the muffled warble of the news inside, but no footsteps or movement. Jane hadn't noticed. Jaden softly climbed down onto the balcony and peeked through the French doors into Jane's bedroom. The news was still blaring. There was a dip in the bed where Jane had been sitting, but she was gone. Jaden craned their neck a little more, took a step forward. The French doors slammed outwards into Jaden, who stumbled. Jane exploded onto the balcony, pushing Jaden backwards with one arm and shoving an ADS heat pistol under their helmet with the other. The gun pulsed, charging, ready to fire. Jane dragged Jaden inside and slammed them onto the floor, training the pulsing heat gun on their head. I should have let them kill you, you little pervert. Jane shouted. Jaden opened their visor. But you didn't. You? Jane stepped back. Your warhead? Jaden sat up. Jane kept the gun trained on them. Yes, I'm warhead. I'm to blame. Jaden pleaded. For everything. Me. Just me. Take me in. I just wanted to make things better, to fix the game. Then they killed Carlos and... Jaden's voice cracked. A tear rolled. Jane's face softened. She kept the gun aimed at Jaden. Just please, make it stop. Jaden begged, taking off the helmet. Let everyone go. Stop killing people. I hacked broadside. Turn me in. End it. They'll listen to you. Jane looked over at the riots on screen. He won't listen to anyone now. Jane said distantly. Jaden looked up at her, not understanding. Jane sighed. Listen, I don't work for Prota anymore. But I'll take you in if that's what you want. Hell, it might save my ass. Or... Jane frowned, conflicted. She breathed out and lowered the gun. Or maybe you shouldn't quit just yet. Maybe there's a way we can still win this. Jane held out a hand. Jaden hesitated and then grabbed it. Jane took Jaden into the home office next to the bedroom. It was neat and sparse, much like Jane's office at work. A houseplant guarded the windows. Jane and Jaden sat at the antique drafting table that dominated the small room. They poured over a screen, which was glowing red. A message flashed. Proto-intranet. Token required. 
Jane produced an NFT tag and sliced it through the red screen. The screen parted like smoke as the tag sliced it, wisps of pixels swirling in its wake. The pixels reconnected and the screen glowed green, whole again, displaying a new message. Access granted. They let you keep that? Jaden motioned to the security tag. Jane was tapping into the network. Of course not. They took my ID when they fired me. This is a noob account. She said with a smile. If something's worth keeping, always make a copy, right? Jaden nodded, puzzled. This sounded like something Zero would say. Jaden looked down at the shredded armor they were still wearing, thinking. Tell me about Rook, the guy in black. Jaden said. The one that killed Carlos. Jane shuddered. They hadn't wanted to believe it. The report said it was an accident that a car hit the boy. But after what he did to Zero, and looking at Jaden now, Jane knew the truth. Her heart sunk for Jaden. She felt anger boiling inside her. I don't know much. I don't even know if that's his real name, said Jane. He's a mindless weapon, a hammer that does Sam's bidding. He needs to be stopped, but he's not the real problem. Sam is the head. Rook is simply a fist. As Jane spoke, she dug into the proto-internet, pulling up what she could on Rook. I hadn't met him before all this happened. He doesn't associate with the other execs, just Sam. There's not much about him, or what he does, even here. Most of it is protected. Jane sat back in defeat as password screens repeatedly blocked her access. Let me worry about the password, Jaden said. Jaden took over. First, they installed Shroud, a cloaking program to stop anyone from tracing them. Next, Jaden connected the brute force program to the proto-internet. Jane figured this is what Jaden used to get into the broadside code. Jaden did all this inside of a minute. Jane watched, impressed with the elegance and speed with which they worked. Once Jaden was in, they pulled up everything they could on Rook. They went deep into the files. They opened one, and the schematic for an armor suit appeared. Jaden punched the air with delight. It was Rook's bone suit. Jaden turned to Jane, looking sheepish. Hey, um, did you get your printer fixed yet? A few minutes later, they were downstairs in the utility room. Jaden leant into Jane's 3D1 once again. They yanked at something and emerged victorious, holding their prey up to show Jane. It was a small gray clod about the size of a baseball. Like I said, Jaden smirked. Ceramics cartridge was blocked. They threw the clod into the recycle chute on top of the printer and hit the button. I'll be sure to give you a great review. Jane said smiling back, turning to leave. Switch everything off when you're done. You can crash in one of the spare bedrooms. I'm gonna keep digging. Jane started to walk out and then turned back. I almost forgot. She said, grabbing a small silver square from the shelf and tossing it to Jaden. You dropped this last time you were here. Jaden caught it. The last custom broadside NFT tag they had lost running from Jane's house. Jaden smiled at Jane as she walked out. Jaden turned and surveyed the utility room, stuffing the NFT tag in their pocket. Next to the state of the art 3D1 was a huge stockpile of military grade materials. The finest metals, ceramics, plastics, even the new tubular compound, it was all here. There was even some experimental stuff that hadn't hit the market yet. Jaden rubbed their hands together and opened a screen. They pulled up Rook's armor files and cracked their knuckles. It was late, but Sam didn't care. He looked like hell, but there was no one to see. He couldn't remember the last time he slept, but he felt great. It reminded him of the early days when he founded his first company, burning the midnight oil in his parents' basement, taking apart all those early Z Corp and MakerBot printers just to see how they worked. Now he was at the top of the tallest building in the city, which he owned, trying to stop his own brand of printers from destroying his empire. And he was going to do it. This he was sure of now. He sat cross-legged on the boardroom table, swaying slightly, a half-full bottle of whiskey beside him, deep in a pile of screens. In the background, he could hear broadsiders chattering over the pirate radio network. Sam held a patch in his hand, just like the one Jason printed, turning it over as he studied it with a big grin. 
Once the patch is on, the Marshal will do anything you want. It doesn't even know it has been hacked. The voice of a young broadsider crackled. Sam smiled at this. A small sound chimed, and another voice wafted in. Sir, I have the president again, said his assistant. He's demanding to speak with you. He says cutting the city power grid is unconstitutional. I'll call back, Sam replied cheerily, waving her voice away. He lay back on the table and laughed, flicking the patch at the ceiling. He watched it fall and roll, coming to a stop across from him at the other end of the boardroom. He couldn't believe the audacity of President Reyes publicly threatening martial law like that after all Sam had done for him. Sam rubbed his eyes, stood up and looked out into the darkness, stretching his legs. He popped another pill as a glowing billboard for Tubular drifted past the window like a neon barge. He chased the pill with whiskey, blinked at a little X in the corner of the billboard, and it disappeared. Rook appeared in a smaller screen. What's the sitch? Sam asked without making eye contact. Rook was standing on the main deck of the hexacopter, the teams behind him steadying the patches. Good news and bad news, Rook said. We updated the security hardware, he said holding up a patch. These things are about as much use as a chocolate teapot now. Sam nodded and started to pace the room. And the bad news? There's been a security breach. Our intranet. We're not sure exactly who it was, where they are, or what they took, but they used a security token with an old ID that might be linked to Jane Stratton. Sam stopped. He felt like he'd been slapped. How dare she? First Reyes and now Jane. His chest tightened. But then he smiled, and after a beat, laughed. He turned to face Rook. No worries. This is perfect, actually. We're going to end this all tonight. He said. Here's what I need you to do. Jason slouched in his fiefdom alone at the safe house in front of a far less impressive table. He was also sleep deprived. He looked around, wondering how he got here, whether things would ever go back to normal, and if that was even what he wanted. He didn't have time to unpack any of these thoughts as a distorted British voice floated into the room over the radio. Hello? It said. I was told to ask for Jason. Is anyone there? Who wants to know? Jason responded into the 92.7 FM app. Look, mate, I don't want to give my name or anything, but listen. I work for Prota. I got some information. What kind of information? Token IDs. For Prota HQ. I can help you disable their security system. Jason sat up. I'm listening. Jane sifted through the internet chat logs, looking for any clues about what Sam and Rook were planning. She turned with a jump at the sound of heavy footsteps on the stairs. Her blood ran cold. The footsteps stomped all the way into her office. Only stealths could do this. She stayed frozen in her chair, holding her breath. She could barely believe what she was seeing as Jaden uncloaked, standing in front of Jane in a new suit of armor. It was based on Rook's stealth suit. The armor was military grade, made of tubular. The suit was wrought and unyielding in its construction, but it had the same tie-dye pattern and hand-drawn lines as Jaden's hacked broadside armor, only now, and anodized shades of metallic black. It had the improved gauntlets Jaden had designed. The spikes on the helmet, elbows, and knuckles Zero had added. Only Jaden's eyes were visible through the trademark Animal Skull helmet. The word skeleton crew were stenciled across their back. It's amazing, laughed Jane, taking in Jaden's handiwork. Jaden took off their helmet. Thank you for everything, Jaden said. You are what you share, Jane shrugged. Jaden gave Jane a look and then noticed one of the old books on a shelf in the office. Their eyes widened as they read the title. Rotten to the Core by Zero MC At the safe house, Jason's mind fizzed as the voice spoke. This was the break he'd been waiting for. He was looking at a map of the city that the voice had sent him, honing in on a house highlighted in a yellow circle. All the pyramid's perimeter defenses are controlled from this house said the gruff voice on the radio. But you need to get there sharpish. They are moving everything to a new facility tomorrow. Riz walked in. Jason turned and stared at her with a big grin. Bro, 
Get everyone up here ASAP.